Hi, baby. Are you okay? I don't know, you just got home and you went straight to the room. So I kind of figured that you wanted some space or some time to yourself and... I was trying to give it to you, but at this point, I kind of just wanted to check in and make sure that you're alright. So do you need anything from me? Do you maybe want me to cook us some dinner, or we could order out tonight if that's something that you want? We could definitely do that. Um, or do you maybe want to talk to me about something? No, baby, no pressure. I'm just saying that... I'm here for you if you need me, or, you know, if you need anything, I've got you. I know. I know that sometimes when we're stressed out or going through something difficult, you know, our tone or our words can come out a little bit harsh, but I know it's not personal, I know you don't mean anything, and I know you're not mad at me, so don't worry about it. But, (laughs) I do have to point something out, and that's that when I opened the door, I did see you try to quickly tuck something in under the covers, and um, I think you know that you've never been good at hiding things from me, so cough it up. (laughs) Come on. I want to see. I kind of think I already know what it is. I think I got a little bit of a sneak peek. You weren't quick enough. So, might as well show me. Oh my god. (laughs) I knew that that's what it was. By the color, yes. (laughs) What? That was your favorite color a couple years ago. That's why I chose it. You don't remember? I remember. (laughs) Well, I just remember that... I remember that I wanted to write you a letter, and I didn't want it to be plain. I wanted it to stand out. I wanted you to look at it and know that it was from me, just in case you had any other little secret admirers or whatever. I was kind of trying to outdo them, so... I knew that that was your favorite color, and I searched everywhere for it. (laughs) I remember being very stressed out because I couldn't find that exact shade, and I didn't want to settle for less for you, but when I finally found it, I was like, I am going to use every paper in this pack and write a letter. (laughs) So I did. That's what I remember. That's how I remember it. I mean, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, true. People's favorite colors do change often. Yours change a little bit more often than most people, but (laughs) I'm just teasing. Well, what's my favorite color? Nope. You have one more try. I'll give you one more try. Mmm... I mean, that's right, I guess. It is red, but the exact shade would kind of have to be like a maroon color. I don't really, you know, the deeper the red, the more I probably like it. Those bright red colors are not really my favorites, but I mean, this is kind of trivial. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, we know way more about each other than just our favorite colors. So, that's what you were doing all this time? You were just in the room reading the letters that I wrote you? That's really sweet. I I don't know, I just... I didn't expect you to... Hmm. I was gonna say, I didn't expect you to still have them, but... I definitely expected you to still have them, I just never expected to see them again. You must have kept them tucked away all these years. You're kind of putting me on the spot here, so 
I mean, I guess I could read it to you. Uh, I'm kind of cringing. <laughs> I don't know. I, you know that I've always been better at writing my feelings than verbally communicating them, so I guess that's why I'm not embarrassed or anything by what I wrote. Granted, I don't remember exactly what I wrote, but I know that when I did write those things, they came from the heart, so I know that I meant every word. I'm not embarrassed about that. I'm more so embarrassed about how cheesy everything probably was. <laughs> and, um, I don't know, just having to read it, I guess. But if it's gonna make you happy, if it's gonna get you out of this room, then I'll do it. Alright. Well, I mean, go ahead and get comfortable. And when you are, let me know so I can start. You're kind of far, so maybe you should come a little bit closer. Mmm, a little closer. <laughs> I mean, that's better. I'd just like to have you close to me. Alright, well, I'm about to start, so... Alrighty. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm not trying to stall. Okay, here I go. My love, I'm assuming if you're reading this, you haven't been feeling too good. Hopefully by the end of this letter, that'll change. The first thing I need you to know is that I love you no matter what. I love you both unconditionally and eternally. I know you tend to isolate when you aren't feeling like yourself because you think I won't want to hear about it or be around you, but that couldn't be further from the truth. All I want to do is hold you tighter and take away any pain or problem. Believe me when I say, if I could give you a life where you wouldn't have to face either, I would. For as long as I'm breathing, I will however support you when you feel unsteady. Something I want you to always keep in mind is how even on your worst days, you manage to make me feel like I'm the luckiest person in the world to have you in my life. I still remember the first time we met. It's going to sound cheesy, but you lit up my entire world. It's as if everything before you had been in these dim shades. Nothing was vibrant. Nothing really made me feel alive or happy. When I saw you, there was color again. Real color. I found myself looking forward to waking up. Opening up. Eager to make memories. Excited to go to places and explore them together. So, so grateful to have a best friend and lover all in one. And it's all because of you, the person you are, your humor, your compassion, your depth and knowledge, the way you're a pillar of strength while being so deeply and beautifully vulnerable at the same time, at least with me. I'm just in awe of you and have been since the first time. That doesn't change because of some bad days. No matter how much you think it does, I still look at you and don't see a life where we aren't sharing the rest of our years with one another. I wish you could see yourself through my eyes. You see, something similar to these beautiful mosaic patterns in this kaleidoscope I had when I was a kid. I'm not saying you're a kaleidoscope, babe, but I am saying it was my favorite thing to see. And now it's you. I know sometimes you don't feel understood or valued by the people in your life. Sometimes your mental health gets difficult to navigate and you feel like the ship is sinking. But I promise to never leave you at sea alone. Even if I can't temper the storms, we will wait together for them to subside, because it can't rain forever. If it does, we'll just have to learn to dance in it. And since I can't dance, maybe I'll just do something really stupid to make you laugh since it tends to work. I don't mind. You deserve it. You don't feel like it now, but somewhere down the line I hope you can recognize how unbelievably strong you are, how important your existence is. How that strength has kept you here, trying. If you don't feel like you still being here has made a difference to anything or anyone, remember how dull everything was before you came around. Remember that because of you, my world has color, and without you, everything would wilt back into dull shades. Please be gentle with yourself. 
You are my heart in human form. Are you okay? Don't cry. Oh, I feel like I did something wrong. I mean, as long as you believe everything that I wrote in there, because I do mean it to this day, as long as that resonates with you and these aren't sad tears, then by all means cry. <laughs> yeah. I mean every word that I wrote then times a thousand now because here we are years later and we're still going strong and I've just gotten to know you more and more I've gotten to see how much more beautiful you are now than you were even then so of course I meant every word that I wrote come here okay I know that sometimes you don't like to show me this side of yourself it's kind of like I said in the letter you like to be this strong person and you don't really like to be too vulnerable or just let yourself feel things in front of me but you never have to feel sorry for feeling any way in front of me and the only reason why I don't like when you cry is because I don't want you to be sad but if they're tears of joy or if they're sad tears that you need to get out then I'm all for it I just don't want you to stay there in that sadness I don't I don't want that to be an everyday thing I definitely still want to be the person that can put a smile on your face and get you out of bed get you out of a bad mood cook you dinner you know bother you <laughs> um in the best way possible, obviously. I don't know. I just want you to know that you're cared for always. And that I love you like a lover, but I also love you because you're just my best friend. And I don't know. I just really wish that you could see yourself through my eyes. Just like I said in the letter then, I still mean that now, if not more now. I think it's important that you are able to step outside yourself sometimes and just see how much you've accomplished. Not from your own perspective, but like, see yourself as if you were a different person and maybe as if you were someone that was a friend of yours. Maybe then you would be more generous to yourself more forgiving of yourself if you could just look at yourself as if you were a friend maybe then you would credit yourself and appreciate all that you've been through all that you've done all that you're doing I don't know I'm just kind of rambling at this point but believe me when I say that if I could just kind of let you inside of me and let you see yourself through my eyes it would be a very different view of yourself that you have and mm, you fell asleep well I'm glad that you get to have some kind of rest now 
I think that you needed it after today. I love you so much. Always. <laughs>